Okay, welcome back to my let's play of Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn on the Nintendo Wii. So last time we had to give up on hard mode so that we could uh, instead play on normal difficulty. And, um, I have now gone up through the end of the of part one. So that was ten chapters plus the prologue. So now this is the start of part two of Countries and Kings, which consists of a prologue and four chapters. Then there's part three, prologue, and 14 chapters. And then part four, which is like... Oh, God. It's like five chapters, a prologue, and then five finale chapters. So basically ten, I guess. Not a quick little game. And I think that was some of the complaints I saw, that it was kind of a slog. Um, especially, like, part four. Um, as for part one on normal difficulty, I would say it was probably the easiest Fire Emblem experience I've had so far. Like, kind of brainless, almost. Um. So, it's really a bummer. I wish there was, it's almost like there is no normal difficulty like, this is kind of easy, and the other one was hard, and normal is just kind of lost in translation somewhere. I, I mean, I don't know. Um, I wish there was something kind of in between, but there isn't. So, probably I should just kind of suck it up and get good and play it on hard, but whatever. So, let's just play a little bit of part two. I have no idea what's going on in the story. Uh, I've been skipping all the cutscenes, so we're not even going to bother. Protect Leanne to keep her from being kidnapped. She's taken. Keep fighting until you take her back. Okay, we have Alincia Marcia from Path of Radiance. Leanne Nialucci. Okay. And... This is interesting. So, I, I obviously, I had a pretty stacked team at the end of part one. You know, we had... Um, uh, what's, what's her name? I'm going to think of her name. Oh, I'll think of it. Mi mer mariachi me mi ma hmm. fuck i don't know her name makaya that's what it is so yeah we had makaya she was a level 20 she got promoted at the end to a a sage and i had uh, Ed edward he was promoted to a sword master he was pretty kick ass I had a knight that it was really good. I mean, I was I had a pretty kick-ass team there. And now I guess that's all been kind of stripped away for these four characters. Oh, I did not protect her very well. could rescue her, but I guess we'll just hold. Um, so yeah, I mean, I gotta say... Overall, so far, and I know I have not experienced much of the game. 
like, I don't even know if we're a third of the way through. I mean, probably somewhat close to a third. It's hard to say, but something like that. I've heard of this guy. People were complaining about this guy. Because once you get this guy, he basically solos the entire game. Okay, well, I'm excited for that. Go solo. Okay, that's a good first showing. Dragon Master. Coming in with 23 strength, 24 skill, 20 speed, 23 defense. Jesus. Um, so I know I haven't experienced even half of the game, but I would say so far... This is among, like, my least favorite. Which is kind of insane, because it's like, really, man, you'd rather play... Uh, Fire Emblem 1 on the Famicom. Kind of. Um, and I, and part of that is just due to kind of like the overall experience. That's, that's somewhat personalized, somewhat subjective, of course. Like, I can play Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light. Um, I can play it with, like, my CRT filter, I got rewind, I got fast forward, save states, you know, nice simple walkthroughs, it's not a very complicated game, and it just kind of looks nice for a Famicom game. This doesn't look nice for any kind of game, you know? And that's a, that's a big aspect, and I've been harping on it the whole time, because I just kind of can't get over just how unfortunate this game looks. And I didn't really feel that way with um, Path of Radiance. You know, people dogged Path of Radiance at the time for its graphical quality. But that's the thing. Like, graphical quality can be... Especially 3D graphical quality. I mean, that's mainly what you're talking about. Um, that can kind of be bumped up. We had an HD texture pack, which fixed some things and made it look okay. Um, not amazing. But okay, but the thing was, the, the sort of art design and the, the sort of color palette and everything of Path of Radiance was a lot more just interesting to look at. This game just looks te terrible. Ah, I really, yeah, I, can, I cannot get over it. And so it just makes it like... It just makes me not really interested in continuing to look at it. Gameplay-wise, it's fine. Um, I mean, you think like, okay, we're well. This is this is new and interesting. We're all flying. We're doing a big aerial battle. And it's like, no, that really doesn't mean anything. This is just a big open field. Um, they introduced um, elevation, finally. Because that wasn't in Path of Radiance. So they, they introduced elevation so that you can have enemies above or below you. And there are mechanical benefits. It's harder to hit an enemy above you, and it's easier to hit an enemy below you, things like that. But it's really kind of clunky, so far as I've seen, and... Which is strange, because Final Fantasy Tactics already, like, solved that years ago, at this point. So I'm not sure, you know, what's up with that. Beyond that, it's just kind of... It's Fire Emblem. There are some interesting thoughts. Uh, so skills, of course, which were introduced in genealogy. 
you know, those are here. And you can actually kind of, like, remove skills from some people and put it on other people. And each character has a limited capacity for skills. That's kind of, I mean, customization, always a good thing. But we still don't have branching promotions, so that sucks. We still don't have any blank slate classes, you know, all these things that I'm just like waiting to come back from Gaiden. Um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's Queen gameplay wise, it's it's fine. It's a wing of Benyon Draco Knights trespassing in Crimean skies. After rescuing Chamberlain Mia Lucci and Princess Leanne, she invites them to be her guests. You know, it, it's similar to Dawn of Radiance now, where I feel like we've had, like... There's, like, five or six Fire Emblem games that are all kind of pretty damn similar. And that's the thing. When a series is, is young and fresh, developers are more likely to experiment. And, you know, try all sorts of different things. That's how we got, you know. That's how we went from Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light to Gaiden. And Gaiden to Genealogy. And Genealogy to Thracia. I mean, they were all about experimentation. But as time goes on and the series goes on, there are expectations from fans. You know, a Fire Emblem game needs to be like a Fire Emblem game. Uh... And that's what we get. So I don't know. The, the you know the evolution slows down, progress kind of slows down, and the iterations become a little bit more, a little bit smaller. But it's still good. I mean, it's still solid strategy RPG stuff. This this whole thing could be way worse. Graphically, though, it couldn't be much worse. All right, so we have two characters here. We've got Brom the Axe General and Nephania Halbadir. So these are already uh, promoted. They shouldn't have too much trouble. Uh, they're using axes, so I guess Brom should... Oh, that's not a very good matchup. I thought they'd kick ass. Okay, that's more what I expected. So, I mean, like, there's your elevation. That That's it. So, it's not like Final Fantasy Tactics or what you kind of think of when you think of a strategy RPG like that, where there's all sorts of, you know, buildings and levels and stuff, and you can be jumping around and hopping around, and you get your archers up really high, and, you know, that sort of gameplay, which is tried and true. This is essentially just a path. I mean, this could easily just be a path, right? It, I think maybe it takes a little bit more movement to go up or down, so there's that. And then there is a, 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 a hit difference if you're above or below here. But that's it. This staircase might work similar uh, as far as, like, shooting up or shooting down. But, um, yeah, otherwise it's essentially just a path. And that's it. The, these three things, that's the elevation differences. 
And if this was a game from like 1994 or something, it'd be like, okay, that's cool. You know, okay, elevation wasn't much of a consideration back then because everything was kind of 2D. Um, but this is 2005, seven. God, 2007. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think I'm harsh on this game because So we we had up to Thracia, right? At Thracia they were on the top of their fucking development game, right? It was it was all good. It was all gravy. Then they switched to Game Boy Advance. And then you cut them some slack cuz it's like, okay, it's Game Boy Advance. The hardware is worse than a Super Famicom. It's a portable experience. Like we're not going to expect them to push the envelope with the Game Boy Advance. Regardless, they kind of did a little bit with, like, Sacred Stone, uh, branching, you know, borrowing some stuff from Gaiden, and the Blazing Blade, making it really more welcoming to newcomers, you know, things like that. Then they come to the GameCube with Path of Radiance, and it's like, okay, they're bringing it to 3D for the first time, this is a big tight, you know, it's a home console release again. So, um, they probably just want to deliver a solid Fire Emblem experience without, again, redesigning the wheel. And that's what they did. They delivered a solid standard Fire Emblem experience and all was well. But now, this is your second con home console release in a row. And you really should be building off of Path of Radiance, and you're kind of not. Yeah, I mean, a little bit, but I don't know. Ooh, Heather, yes. She's, she's a rogue. I can't control her yet. mine now you belong to me so i mean yeah would i rank this below shadow dragon and the blade of light i don't know it's hard to say i feel like i've already forgotten shadow dragon and the blade of light and it's it's really difficult to just like judge it in a vacuum because I, I was very surprised with how playable the first game was and you know you ha you consider, oh, this is a Famicom game, and it's, like, really pretty decent. Um, but... Obviously, <laughs> this game has a lot... It's a lot easier to just play and experience. Quality of life, and, you know, all that sort of stuff. And the speed of things, and... Blah, blah, blah. It's pretty weak. Wow, you didn't even kill him. That's bad. Uh, 
Yeah, I think it's just like... For the first eight games or so, I kind of felt like every game was better in some way than the one before it. Uh, except, for, except for Mystery of the Emblem, which is the odd man out. Um, and, and graphically, Mystery of the Emblem was good. But, yeah, I mean, overall, the series just kept on improving and improving. And now, I don't know. I'm not so sure. Oh, I forgot about that one. And again, it's, it's fine. I mean, like we said, uh, it's really kind of a least best situation with Fire Emblem. And it could be, uh, it could be that I am starting to get a little burned out of just the same motions. Each time, you know. Because that's what I, that's what I said when we first started with the first game. Like, if you've played any strategy RPG, this is familiar. And so we've been kind of doing the same thing uh, across 10 games now. Nice. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, but I don't know if we can... Nah, I mean, not, not yet, at least. Vector card. Let's non-magic users launch a magical attack. Okay. Well, it's something. Oh, shit. He moved. You're not supposed to move. What's his chance to hit me? 27. It's pretty minor. Good. Alright, well, theoretically, this will work out. But yeah, I think Fire Emblem as a series is way steadier and like like reliable compared to say Final Fantasy. I think Dragon Quest is like that as well. I think Dragon Quest is very steady and reliable and does not uh evolve too much from the first game to like the latest game. It's it's going to be fairly familiar. Um Whereas Final Fantasy, if you compare the first Final Fantasy to Final Fantasy 16, it's it's like a different series. It's like a different franchise. Um, so there is something to be said for for being steady and reliable. I mean, I I certainly wish Final Fantasy was a little bit more reliable in that sense. Um, 
But at the same time, you know. Ah, yes, I will kill you with a car. I mean, overall, I'm I'm very pleased that I have done this and start, you know, gone started going through this whole series. Because there are so many games now I can go back to and actually play them all the way through. I'd like to play through Gaiden, although maybe the remake will... Maybe I won't need to. I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, Genealogy, I'm definitely planning on playing through. Thracia, I'd like to be good enough at some point to play through. Um, probably, like, the other two Game Boy Advance games. So, I mean, that's that's a lot of... That's a lot of Fire Emblem. Yes, okay. I will say, reading the, the Wikipedia page for the plot summary for this game, it did seem pretty interesting. Um, but, you know. I just, I just struggle. Experiencing. While I'm trying to just play a game. Um, we have no shop. We do have XP. So, we're actually, yeah, we actually have a bunch of promoted characters. So that's kind of, so it's not like you're starting, f like, fresh, like a, like a new game. You're sort of at the same level that you just departed from, part one. Uh, it's just with different characters of similar power level. Well, I guess let's buff up Brom. He seems like a lovable scamp. And bump him up to level 7. I mean, yeah, this is certainly part of this, the uh, the casual of if casualification, casual ca you know, casual fine of the franchise, that you can just hand out bonus XP like this and level up. But I'm not against it, I guess. Talisman? And an elixir. Increase resistance by two. To Brom, you go. So he has a javelin, but he can't use a javelin. We have nothing in our convoy, and we have no shop. Okay. You can use... Okay, I somehow that got, that got mixed around. Also... Do that. The rest is reasonable. Okay. Let's do one more chapter for Radiant Dawn before calling it a day. Fog of War, yes. Watchfire. Burn. Aha. Uh -huh. There's rebel scum here. Um We have two like useless characters here, so that's great. Hmm. Feel like I probably shouldn't use her, but uh, I don't care.
Are you a caster? Or no, you're. I don't know what you are. And you're a rogue, so that's that's that. I think these are all Yagus. Fuck. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I discovered that. Uh, in humanoid form in, in this game, I don't know if it's true in Path of Radiance, but they can counterattack physically. None of these can do anything. Nice. That was a fortunate crit. Punch. Ow! Oh! He's pissed now, man. He's ready to fucking rock. Smite! Slam into an adjacent unit to move it two spaces away. That's pretty cool, but I think we'll just bite. Steals torch. Yeah, I mean, I can't kill him. Fuck it. Steals torch. Oh, and it actually just brightened up the area around. Just by having it. Archer didn't do anything. That's weird. Eventually, these two do, will do something. Um, yeah, so a Galder. I was presented with a tutorial for it, and I just said, nah. Oh, it's a dance. Okay. I think I used it on somebody that hadn't gone yet. Or maybe I just didn't realize. I don't know. Okay, that's good to know. Dancers are good. a good unit to have around. Hmm. As expected.
pretty powerful. Nugget. Of course. I don't know, man. Oh. No. Oh. I didn't know this had a range of two. Okay, 11% chance to hit. Not gonna happen. Heal that, bitch. Um, yeah, anyways. Boss should be around here somewhere, probably up in that corner. Well, hello there. It's a little iffy. Oh, they're coming. Yeah, the Yagus are pretty damn powerful. It's an interesting concept. Having, like, limited time powerful units. Because that at least kind of, you know, breaks up the, the monotony and the... the general sort of established flow of the entire series so that's good but you know we have to give that credit to path of radiance uh radiant dawn didn't really i think they did some things a little different a little new but not to the extent of adding yagus to the series Big man. And this is probably not going to be. <coughs> it's really not bad. Yeah. Parity. Cancel terrain support and skill bonuses to rely on tactics alone.
Okay. Yeah, but I don't know. Just kind of uh, dull looking visuals, dull map design, and just overall, this does not. You never describe Radiant Dawn as like a joy to play through, I feel. I know. I should just let Lucia do it. She's like guaranteed to get the kill now, but nah, that's fine. It's fine. Strong anti Jagan policy. Uh. Oh, this guy has gone. You could just peck out his eyes. Ow. Ooh, that would have been a kill. That's that. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of my overall thoughts on Radiant Dawn. Um, I, I doubt I'll ever come back to it. Just because, like, from now on, whenever I think of Radiant Dawn, I'm just going to think of, like, these visuals and it just being, like, a really dull game. It's not a bad game, it's just not as good as so many other games in the in the series. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at these reviews here. Okay, first of all, uh the difficulty will easily overwhelm even experienced tacticians. Yeah, because most people didn't know, I guess. And you were playing on hard mode. Um, some reviewers were also critical of the developer's choice not to use the Wii's motion controls. What the fuck? <laughs> That's the most brain dead take I've ever heard in my life. What the fuck motion controls would you want for a strategy RPG turn based? Oh my god. In general, critics praised the gameplay system recognized in previous Fire Emblem games, but noted that the game felt too similar to its GameCube predecessor. Yes, which is funny because Path of Radiance felt too similar to, like, every other Fire Emblem. So we're just kind of, like, <laughs> turning the same wheel here. Uh, O&M's Chandra Nair commenting that Radiant Dawn has refused to move forward. Yeah, that's sort of my impression. He criticizes it for being unforgiving, noting that it features permanent death and is not really a Wii game. Yeah, I mean, 
It's a Fire Emblem game. But yes, I, I think it's clear that most people did not understand normal was hard. And why would they think normal was hard? It's there was a ridiculous fuck up. Uh, praised the game's length and range of characters, but stated that the Yagus still aren't very useful. GameSpot described the story as laughable and the game's villains as cliched and one-dimensional. Yeah, that's called a Fire Emblem game. Uh, IGN remarked that voice acting should have been used for the entirety of the game. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we expect nowadays, I, I guess. Uh, multiple reviewers noted that the game's visuals were very similar to its predecessors. Yes, but worse. Yeah. So, I mean, Metacritic on, on Metacritic has a 78 out of 100. I guess that's probably about right. Maybe, maybe that's a little high. I, I don't know. GameSpot gave it a 6 out of 10 back then. I think that's maybe a little low. It's hard to say. It's certainly, I don't think, like peak Fire Emblem, as some people have said. Um, Nintendo Power gave it a 9.5 out of 10. Holy shit. No bias whatsoever. Incredible. Um, but yeah. So I, I don't think I'll ever come back to Radiant Dawn. Uh, whereas I... I will come back to Path of Radiance at some point. Um, and I think really the only key difference there is is the visuals, which is a really petty thing, I think. I don't usually harp on visuals or care that much. But when a game just kind of depresses me to look at it, I, I, it's just... Yeah, it's not great. Um, so that's it. That is it now for home console Fire Emblems for the next 12 years. Uh, instead, we are on the DS and 3DS. So next time we're going to be starting up Shadow Dragon, which came out in 2008 for the DS, as a full remake of Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light. It's kind of curious. I mean, even aside from the fact that they already remade it with Mystery of the Emblem, um, it's kind of curious that they would be interested in remaking their first game rather than just continuing to move forward. Like, what is it about the first game that they were like, you know, people really need to... People need to experience this. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, they save some time with map design because they reuse all the same maps, I assume. But aside from, I, I don't know. It was decided by Intelligent Systems to remake Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light so more players could experience software from their early days. They also wanted players outside Japan to experience the game for the first time. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I guess. We will see um, how it compares to the OG. It probably will compare favor favorably, I would imagine. But for now... My name is Mang. Gaming just finished watching is Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. I'll see you fine folks next time.